This is the LabQuest 2. This is the interface we're going to use a lot for collecting data and doing experiments throughout physics. Okay, And it's got a few basic things I want to show you. Um, first, it is a touch screen, okay, so everything is going to basically be gone through on this interface. It will connect wirelessly with your iPad. Um, and when you use it, there's a couple different places you can plug in sensors depending on what you're using. If you're using an analog sensor, which are things like force probes and temperature sensors, okay, they plug in a lot right along the side here, and these only fit in one direction. You line it up, clip it in, okay, and you're ready to go and collect data there. If you have a digital sensor like a photo gate or a motion detector, okay, you have to open this little rubber flap at the top. Okay. and then they just plug in there. So that's pretty straightforward, easy to use. Um, right next to this rubber flap to hide the digital sensors is the power button. Okay, Push it once and it wakes up and it'll start loading its screen and I'll show you how that stuff works in just a second. Okay, If I push the power button again, it goes to sleep. Okay, We never really have to shut these down or power them all the way down. When we're done, this side has the charging dock station in it and okay, and so this just slips into a charging dock when you're done. There are three hardware buttons along here. We almost never use them, but sometimes they are handy. Uh, and there is a USB cable port here and power here. Now I'll show you how to use the software interface. This is the software interface of the LabQuest, okay? And there's some basic screens on the LabQuest that you should be familiar with, okay? The default screen when it comes up is this one. Now, sometimes this screen doesn't launch right away. Sometimes you're looking at this screen, okay? And usually we don't need to deal with anything in here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and click LabQuest app, okay? That's the app that we use to collect all our data. And down here it shows me my battery and my Wi-Fi connection, okay? And this is called the meter screen because up in the top left corner here is this icon of a meter, Okay, and this is where most of our adjustments are made. This is where we do most of the setup of our sensors. Okay, this is the graph screen. If I touch that little icon, it shows me a graph, Y and X, and those will change depending on what sensors I'm plugged in and what I'm recording. This is the table screen. I almost never use the table screen. This is the um, viewer screen. If I put lab directions right on the lab quest, they'd show up here. I never do that. Okay, and then there's a note screen here if you want to take notes during the lab, but I don't think that that's, you know, I mean, you have your iPad, so it'll be okay. Okay, so the meter screen, this is where most of what we do happens. Okay, so I'm going to show you what happens if I plug in a sensor. Okay, some of my sensors are auto ID sensors, and some of them are not. So if I actually plug this into channel one, okay, it lights up right away. It tells me I have a temperature sensor. My temperature probe is an auto ID sensor. Okay, and it tells me it's 23.8 degrees Celsius in here. And if I touch this, okay, I can say, okay, well, I want that in Fahrenheit or Kelvin, whatever. Um, there's several options there. Okay, now since this was an auto ID sensor, I don't have a lot to deal with, but I can change how long it samples for and, and how many samples it's taking. So over here under mode, rate, and duration, any of these, these are hot, they're clickable, I can touch them, and it gives me some options. Okay, so time-based is telling me I'm going to take samples based on time. There are some other things we can do, okay, depending on what we're doing. We can do events with entry, where if I'm changing something and then I tell it I changed it, I can do it that way. If I had a photo gate in there, we could do things like that. Okay, but time-based is good enough for this one. Rate and interval. These are two ways of looking at the same thing. The rate says I'm going to take two samples per second. The interval says, well, maybe sometimes it's seconds per sample. I want to go the other way. So every half second, it's going to sample. Okay, so if I change one, the other one changes in response. So if I click in there and it says two seconds and I change it to four sec or four samples per second and click done, then you can see now my interval is 0.25 seconds per sample. Okay, I don't really need to do that. Um, I can, I'm going to probably go one, okay, and, and there we go. So one sample per second, one second per sample. Duration, this is how long my experiment's going to last. How long is it actually going to collect data for? This is measured in seconds, okay, I can change that, but 180 seconds is three minutes. So if I wanted five minutes, I could put five here and then change my units from seconds to minutes, okay. And so it tells me, okay, I'm going to collect five minutes but then it changed this in response so now I'm doing one sample per minute or one minute per sample okay and so you gotta be careful when you do things like that so if I really wanted my one sample every second and my duration to be five minutes then I need to put in my 
my time in seconds. Okay. All right. And then triggering. Sometimes we use that. Okay. If we're gonna use triggering, it's right there, and you can change stuff there. If we ever have to do that, I'll show you how. Um, and we're not a photo gate or anything like that. Okay. So that's the meter screen. When we're done in there, we push OK. And now over here, it tells me what I changed. I'm still time based. I'm one sample per second, and I'm collecting for 300 seconds. Okay. And then once I'm ready to start data collection, I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna push play. And it automatically, you can see, it changed my graph from temperature or y and x to temperature and time. And it's just plotting one sample per second across the duration. Now, if I grab my temperature sensor and hold on to it, um, the temperature starts going up. Okay, uh, just like we expect. If data collection, if you're done collecting data before time runs out, you can stop it. Okay, and then it auto scales your graph. Okay, now there are some cool things you can do up here on your graph screen as far as analysis goes, but you can also do it on your iPad, which is a little bit easier. So now uh, I actually want to show you guys how your iPad works. So you guys all have an app called Graphical or Graphical Analysis, and if we launch that app, okay. Uh, over here in the top left, it actually has a whole bunch of options for you. Okay, there's built-in sensors, which will actually use the accelerometers built into the lab quest. Manual entry, where if you need to type in data, you can. Uh, or it actually shows me some lab quests that it can communicate with. It can communicate with my lab quest, so I have it connected to lab quest 1203. You can see this is that temperature data I just collected. Okay, now, what's cool about this is there is um, some things I can do right on my iPad. I can actually control the lab quest through my iPad. Now, this screen up here is my scaling or zooming screen, and I'm going to minimize that and get it out of the way. Okay, so if I touch over here, okay, it does, it goes out of the way. Now, all I have to do to start doing analysis on this is highlighting portions of the curve I'm interested in. So if I wanted to see this section, I'm going to touch and drag on my screen across there, and it shows me these little flags. I started at 12 seconds, I ended at 21 seconds, and if I touch inside here on my screen, okay, it brings up this menu, and it says, okay, well, what do you want to do? Well, I can describe it, like, since this is where I, I grabbed the temperature probe, I can say, um, grabbed temp probe, so I can explain why this happened. Okay, and so it's starting to measure not air temperature, but my temperature. And then these little bars down here, okay, they actually will let me do a fit. Now this isn't linear and it's not quadratic. I don't, you know, I'm not sure what it is. Okay, but if I thought I had a good idea what it looked like, I could do that. And it starts to actually fit curves to this data. Okay, and None of these look like they fit very well because, well, it's not really any of them. But if I throw a line on there, it actually gives me the equation of that line. Uh, and so sometimes that's very, very helpful. Okay, I can add that in there, and now I can see, okay, there's the linear data that we collected um, for this temperature. And if I want up here on the top, okay, I can say, okay, well, what if I wanted to look at a different graph? or a different screen, I can select that out of there. If I want to share this data, email it, um, save the pictures, whatever, I can do that through there. Um, and then down here in the bottom, if I want to just look at data I've collected before, I can touch this history thing, and that actually shows me a whole bunch of data that I've collected in the past. And, and so I can pick through some of those. Okay? So you're going to use your lab quest as well as the iPad to do some data analysis and look at all this stuff. Okay, so it's a pretty straightforward, intuitive system. You can't break it. Just play with it, get familiar with it, and I'm sure you guys can figure it out.